Hello students. In today's video, we are going to study our next agricultural practice that is harvesting. So harvesting is the cutting of mature crop plants. Generally, cereal crops take 3 to 4 months to get mature. So harvesting that is cutting of mature crop plants. So it is done either manually or using machine. So in the first picture you are seeing that manual harvesting is done by a tool called sickle. It takes too much time and labor. And in the second picture you are seeing that harvester is used for harvesting the crop plant. It saves time as well as labor. Now in this sequence another practice is threshing. So when grains are harvested they need to be removed from the stalk. So removal of grains from a stalk or chaff is termed as threshing. So threshing can be done by three ways. First one is manual threshing. In this crop plants are beaten on the ground or floor and grains are separated from the stalk. In the second picture you are seeing threshing using machine called thresher. So in this by machine grains are separated from the stalks. And in the third picture you are seeing combine. So this combine is combination of harvester and thresher. Crops are harvested and at the same time they are being threshed also. So this combine that is harvesting and threshing taking place simultaneously. It saves too much time and labor. Next is winnowing. So the process of separating chaff from grains using wind is known as winnowing. So after threshing is done, grains should be totally separated from the chaff. So by using wind, uh, grains are separated from the chaff. So this is also done by two methods. First picture you are seeing traditional method. Uh, here grains are separated from the chaff using supa and they are fallen from great height and wind separates the lighter particles and heavy grain particles they settle at the bottom. In another picture you are seeing winnowing machine. So here with the help of winnowing machine grains are separated from the chaff. Now after harvesting, threshing, winnowing, grains are need to be stored properly. So this is accomplished by using the practice which is known as storage. Grains need to be stored properly because if we do not store them properly then they will catch moisture and they may get infected with bacteria, fungi, um, rodents, rats and they may not be fit for germination and also for human use. So they need to be stored properly and also before storage they should be properly sun dried so that there doesn't remain any moisture. So this storage is done on two scales, a small scale storage and large scale storage. So in a small scale storage, we can use jute bags or metallic bins. So generally a small scale storage as we are doing in our homes or in a small go-downs, jute bags, metallic bins can be used and here we use dried neem leaves 
to protect our grains from the pests. Another one is large scale storage where grains are stored on large scale. So this can be done by using silos or granaries. So silos are specialized thermoregulated containers in which grains are stored properly without having any effect on them of outer environment, outer temperature. So they get protected from fungal infections. On the other hand, granaries, big go-downs are there where grains are stored in the gunny bags. So in large scale, to protect grains, special chemicals, pesticides, extra are used to protect the grains from pests, rats, rodents, bacteria, fungus, extra. So there is a special need for safe storage of grains to ensure the availability of seasonal food throughout the year. When grains are stored properly, then we can easily make available food throughout the year. To facilitate distribution of food materials for longer periods. So if we store the grains properly, then for longer periods we will be able to get the food materials. To protect the perishable food materials for longer period. So perishable food materials that is uh, your vegetables, fruits etc which get um, damaged, spoiled quite early. So for longer periods if we protect them, safely store them then their shelf life increases. To reach food materials to remote areas. So while sending food materials to remote areas it takes time. So to protect and uh, to uh, just transport food materials safely to remote areas we should store the grains properly. To facilitate the distribution of food materials in case of emergency. So if we have properly stored food material in large amount then in case of emergency we can easily help the people by distributing the food material. And then buffer stock. It is the food stock to supply at the time of emergency. So this special stock is kept for emergency purpose. So okay students, up to here we have studied our basic agricultural practices for crop production. So in next video, we will be coming up with some another practices, another um, phenomenon. Till then, take care. Goodbye. See you in next video. Bye-bye.